Warning, this video contains footage of faulty made in China stuff, strobing lights and a very big, hairy, scary spider. And because some people may see this as an instructional, I better throw this title up as well. Well, this video is a bit of a query about buying cheap stuff which is made in China. And what you see before you are three identical lights. They are LED lights and are powered from a low voltage transformer. The transformers are all identical. And if I go down and I read what they can put out, they are output DC 12 volts, 400 milliamps. I've checked the output voltage from these transformers and they are putting out about 15 volts. First we're going to have a look at light 1 and is what I class as performing correctly. This is the big light output that I was getting from all lights until the other two started to malfunction. If I come in and hold my hand at the light, you can see how punchy the light is from those LEDs. Light number 2 is one which has malfunctioned and it is outputting a much dimmer light. All the LEDs seem to be working but they are all far far dimmer than light number one. If I bring my hand in you can see how much less light is coming out of light number two. Light number three is performing in the most unusual way. It has turned into a strobe light and this seems to cycle from being very fast and then flashing very slowly as well. It's the sort of flashing that makes some people very, very edgy. Each one of these lights cost me $15 here in Australia. And they are basically all essentially the same. Two have a clip type base and one has a round weighted base. Am I the unluckiest consumer on the planet or is there a basic design flaw with these styles of lights? I'm wondering how many other people out there have got one of these and they've started to malfunction. The problems with these started to occur within two weeks of purchasing. You know, it's funny, there was this little LED light that was brought in from overseas. Uh, it only cost $5, and it was something that you just plugged into the wall, and it had a battery in there, and it would charge itself up. And I thought, well, it was bought for $5. It's only going to last a short time, but this little elephant lasted about eight months. I'm assuming it's made in China. That's the only sticker on this little beast. And these days it spends its retirement as a strange looking ornament in the house. Now these lights were purchased at Kmart Australia. I've got nothing against Kmart. I shop there a lot. But the logical thing to do would be to check the transformers if I take that one out. This is the light that works. I'm taking the transformer across from the light that works into the one with the strobing. And let's plug this one in here. Do a bit of a cross check here. And let's go back and let's see what's happening now. And we can still see the strobing one is still strobing. The good one, number one, is working correctly. So that sort of tells me that the problem is emanating from somewhere within the bulb set. Um, electronics is certainly not my strength. So I'm wondering out there who knows about problems with these styles of lights. Everyone was thinking, wow, when LEDs come along, we're going to be saved. But I don't think so. I'm in my 40s and what I'm finding out is that cheap stuff made in China is really hit and miss. In the earlier part of my life, lots of stuff was made from other overseas countries. Might have been somewhere from Europe, it might have been somewhere from the USA, or somewhere not China, and they tended to be items which were fairly good. Sure, they were expensive, but hey, you weren't having to replace them within weeks of purchasing. The price point of $15 is also important to note here, because that's sort of the point where you think, well, if it goes wrong, I can just throw it away and zoom out and get another one. It's almost like you don't bother if something goes wrong when it's so, so cheap. Like I said before, I feel like I'm one of the unluckiest consumers on the earth. But let's take a look at some other stuff which has been hit and miss of late. The YouTuber Aussie50 is going to relate to this. And this is a air compressor that I purchased oh, about a year ago, I suppose. Of course it was cheap. Of course it's made in China. And this is what it does at the moment. It's locked up. As you can see, this thing has not done very much work. It just lives under the house and it helps me out making a video every now and then by supplying a little bit of air. And either it's frozen up in here or the electric motor has given it in. And usually there'll be other people that have had the same thing happen to them and it'll be the key to working out what's gone wrong. There'd be one thing that I'd note about it is that it had been weeping a bit of oil and you can see the mark of it going down there. 
it certainly has oil. I know you'll be saying, oh, but it's it's probably frozen up. It's got oil in there. Although they say to keep the oil up on the red mark. And one notable thing was just before it failed, it was making some very, very labored sounds. It seemed like it was struggling to push that piston to pump air. Um, my gut feeling is it's a problem in here somewhere with the piston. That's my gut feeling, but I've got to pull it apart to work out what's going on. This GMC lawnmower was quite good when I first bought it. I only bought it because it was extremely cheap. I did a few modifications to it so it doesn't need a catcher. Um, GMC is interesting. It's made in China and from what I believe it was designed in Australia. Unfortunately you can't get GMC stuff anymore. Some of this stuff is really good. But what was wrong with this mower was the coil failed. The coil was up, up inside there and that's actually a coil that I found on a lawnmower which was just in the rubbish heap from another house and the coil was all rusty and it was a bit like well it seemed <laughs> it seemed like it was made up of components that had been laying around outside um, and that was very early in its life it was only a couple of months old and it had no spark the other peculiar thing that was happening with this lawnmower was it kept losing its ability to have choke and the throttle was weird and what I noticed was these parts here, which belong to the throttle control, were very easily damaged when running under trees and stuff. So in a sense that is a design flaw considering it's a mower. And of course we're looking underneath that mower now and I'll show you the modification I did to turn it into a mulching mower. I added this piece of steel into the base plate area. So normally the grass would have been thrown up into the catcher. I don't like catchers and the catcher that came with this was useless. So this piece of steel turns this lawnmower into a mulcher. You know, sometimes buying stuff from China can be very hit and miss. I purchased this GMC water blaster uh, down at, I think it was Bunnings. It wasn't very much to buy. It was a couple of years ago now, maybe five years ago. Um, and it was good for the first few weeks and then it stopped. And I'll have to open it up to show you what I did to make it run for this long. Okay, taking the screws out, which hold the cover on at the top, taking the big hose off. That's connected electrically at the back there. I just sit that there. What was really unusual when I purchased this and it went wrong, uh, these big nuts here were plastic. Um, and they blew. One of them had split. There was just O-rings. Like they, were, they were down, um, pushed down onto O-rings. Um, in fact, two of them leaking. I think it was the outside two. And what was really weird was the thread here. Is this really really unusual thread and I think I ended up butchering something in there and there's a whole bunch of thread tape as you can see um, to resurrect this I'm not sure whether it was might have been across the board actually I'm not sure if it was just these three or both lots but uh, that's what was going on there oh hang on a second I've got a vis <laughs> is the I've, got <laughs> I've got a visitor riding in here <laughs> Uh, at least it's a devil, I suppose. Uh, welcome to Australia. You'll find those just about everywhere. Um, yeah, but since I put those in, I have absolutely punished this machine, and I mean punished that it. it's cleaned the house down, well, what, five years in a row, I think? Um, cleans cars. It has been given a beast of a time, and you can sort of see, we're looking at the top cover. Um, it's been well used, it's, it's all sun faded and I think the other thing I noticed when I pulled it apart was was this part here, this is where the hose plugs into the machine, the outlet side and it's starting to to get all rusty and gammy well because I'm curious and I seem to have a lot of spiders around the house let's take a closer look at this little spider who's decided to ride my pressure washer as a sarcophagus there he or she is very hairy as some of you may know I've had a lot of spiders in the house in my last summer and of course that would have been your winter because we all seem to be back to front and I've never ever quite worked out how to tell the sex of these things some people say you're looking for bits at the front other people say you're looking for bits at the back no one yet has clearly defined to me what to look for to sex these things um, I've always got a feeling it's the females who are jumping me. I'd hate to think it's the males that are jumping me. I'm not sure whether this brand was ever seen in the USA. It was all through Australia a couple of years ago and then all of a sudden it just vanished. 
this little water blaster is very typical of what I think about Chinese stuff. You can take a gamble and it can be fantastic. Sometimes there's one little thing wrong and it brings the whole machine down. And if you're lucky, you can quite easily go in and fix it. That's if you've got tools and a little bit of know-how how to fix stuff. Just for a bit of fun, let's give this thing a burl and show you that it still works. Yes, I will do a follow-up video about the compressor and it's interesting the chain of events which caused the compressor to fail. And as I thought, it can be rooted back to a problem where the compressor was manufactured. And I'm also going to cover the topic of people who go around flagging videos. There's certainly a few things I want to say and get off my chest in relation to that topic. As always, thanks for your time and thank you for viewing. Goodbye.